Hi, D2L Fusion friends. My name is Hang Mingzhang, and I am an instructional designer at Middle Tennessee State University. In this recorded presentation, I'm going to present on designing authentic and interactive gamified experiences using H5P and D2L features for adult learners. I will showcase a variety of gamified projects to demonstrate how we can and design meaningful gamified experiences. I've divided my presentation into three parts, including why gamification, how gamification, and concrete examples. Without further ado, let's get started. Before we dive deeper into the topic, I'd love to hear what you think about gamification. I've put together a multiple question using H5P. The first question is, how do you feel about using gamification in e-learning for adult learners? Do you like or frown upon the idea? The follow-up question is, why do you like or dislike using gamification for adult learners? I conducted the same survey with my faculty members about using gamification. 8 out of 10 respondents expressed a dislike for incorporating gamification in online courses. Some believe gamification is too childish, while others consider it mere busy work that confuses students. As a strong proponent of gamification, I believe that discussing gamifications at D2L conference will help debunking misconceptions about gamification and support both faculty and learners. Gamification is different from playing games. It incorporates game elements like points, badges, stories, characters, and challenges to engage learners and help them reach learning objectives. Using gamification aligns with the ARCS model of motivation and attention, relevance, confidence, and satisfaction as it challenges learners to solve problems, giving them a sense of accomplishment. Initially, learners may be motivated by extrinsic factors such as awards, but they gradually transition into intrinsic motivation, appreciating the value of learning. This intrinsic motivation makes learning enjoyable and promotes lifelong learning. Gamification also serves as an effective scaffolding tool. Many gamified projects are staged, progressing from lower to higher cognitive challenges. As learners advance through these stages, they meet gradually escalating learning goals. Repeated tasks within these projects help reinforce information and the retention of key concepts. For many gamified projects, learners need to collaborate and tackle challenges together this enhances their communication skills and social interactions. After we talk about why, let's take a look at how. First, gamification doesn't need to be used throughout the entire course. It's most effective when strategically placed. Uh, it can be used at the course beginning to attract learners, at the end of the module to assess learners' knowledge, or in the middle of the module to provide varying levels of scaffolding and instructional support. Second, we need to tie learning objectives and gamified activities. We may use the backward design method, starting from establishing learning objectives and then choose an appropriate learning activity for the goal. 
we can develop contexts, narratives, or characters for the game fight encounter and be as creative as we can. Educators are natural creators. According to Mayer's principles of personalization and image, learners learn better when they have characters that talk to them casually. We also want to balance the time and effort required for learners to engage in an activity while maintaining an appropriate pace. For example, if the objective is to memorize vocabulary, a matching game might be suitable. However, if it takes an hour to memorize 10 words, the time spent may not justify the outcome, leading learners to perceive it as um, busy work. If the objective is for learners to respond to critical situations in various ways, a branching scenario that simulates different outcomes might be ideal. The branching scenario is more time-consuming than a drag-and-drop or matching game. However, it is worth the time as it challenges learners and helps them practice higher-order thinking skills. We also want to provide authentic and timely feedback in the game fight experience. One thing that really helps um, learners is that when they click on a button in the game, they get feedback right away and they know if they need to practice more or if they uh, can move on to the next piece. The last part of this presentation is about examples of using H5P and D2L features to create gamifications. While numerous websites offer educational games, H5P's seamless integration into D2L allows instructors to manage gamified projects without directing students to external sites. D2L's batch system and release conditions can also enhance the creation of authentic gamified experiences, such as escape room. We have a variety of choices in our toolbox. It matters that we choose the activity that best serves its purpose. I'd like to share with you one example I created, the D2L Chemistry Lab Safety Training Escape Room project. This is a project that combines a variety of game strategies and elements and aims to meet the needs of diverse students. This is a chemistry lab safety guideline escape room project. Students earn three badges as they complete three tasks, scaling from basic to advanced knowledge of lab safety. In this escape room, I introduced a character, a mysterious chemist who doubles as a kidnapper. Students must correctly answer his questions to escape. Incorrect answers lead to immediate feedback and the necessity to start over. Learners are guided to navigate a virtual tour tackle a crossword puzzle and engage in a branching scenario. Let's take a look at each mini task. In the uh, first one, in the story, the learner is in a dangerous situation and must acquire knowledge that helps them save themselves. I used the AI to create a quite realistic image of the chemistry lab escape room. I think the story and the image can really engage learners. I've also listed the key items learners need to understand as they work on this learning activity. When the learner clicks on the virtual tour of the chemistry lab, they will see a panoramic picture of the lab and will need to click on different hotspots to view all the information. After that, 
they will navigate to a different image that shows the mysterious kidnapper who says, congratulations, you've unlocked your first escape room. I have set up the release condition in D2L. So after completing um, task one, the learner will be rewarded with a D2L badge. The second task is a chemistry word puzzle, crossword puzzle. By engaging in this quiz assessment, the learner can demonstrate their mastery of their knowledge, um, reinforce key concepts, and help with the retention of this critical knowledge. In the third task, an escape the chemistry lab branching scenario is designed to assess how learners will apply their knowledge of chemistry safety in the lab to a critical situation. They will see a chemist identifying a critical problem in the lab and will be prompted to respond to this situation. If the learner uh, chooses incorrect answers, they have to try again. Uh, before that, they will need to read feedback and then start over. If they choose correctly, the task will be complete and they will receive their third batch. Thank you for watching my presentation. I hope you found the insights and examples helpful.